Hi everybody, it's Starla from Starla's Creative Teaching Tips. And hey, today, did you know we're going to talk about that the meat that you eat is actually skeletal muscle? That's right. I'm not worried about it ruining food. You'll be just fine. All right? So, I'm going to take you through. Now, just remind you, there are three types of muscle in the body. Of course, there's cardiac. Everybody remember that? How we found your heart when we did blood pressure on the blood pressure one? That's cardiac muscle, only found in the heart. Then there's smooth muscle, and it's involuntary. You can remember this, golden rule. It's found around every hollow organ in the body except the heart, of course, and it usually has two layers. It goes around this way and longitudinally so it can open and close tubes. So blood vessels, yeah, your gut, reproduction, respiratory, all of those tubes have smooth muscle around them. And remember, the magic number is two. There's only one exception, and that's your stomach, and it has three. Always has to be an exception, right? So today, let's concentrate on the skeletal muscle. And I'm going to teach you three things about skeletal muscle that you probably will not learn in, uh, you know, out of a textbook, okay? And once you go through these three with me, you will never, ever, ever think muscles are hard ever again. You'll see them, you'll understand them, and they're so simple. Okay, so here's the first one we're going to do. You ready? You do it with me. Okay, so get your hand out. Doesn't matter which one. All right, just hand out like this. Very good. Okay, now your right hand is going to be the muscle. Okay, here we go. See it? So your thumb is one attachment and your fingers are the other. Now this lesson, for those of you who like to teach this, okay, is found on my website. Okay, and it's found under STARS notes, and it's module three, the muscle. Cool. All right, here we go. Ready? All right, so place your thumb above your elbow and put your fingers below it. Excellent. Okay, you ready? Rule number one. Okay, so muscles follow three rules. Rule number one. Muscles must have at least two attachments. See? See it right here? There's one attachment up here, and there's one attachment down here. You see that? Pretty cool, huh? All right, so muscles must have at least two attachments, excellent, and they must cross at least one joint. All right, so that's a great rule for all the skeletal muscles in your body to follow. There's always a few exceptions, like in the face, but that's a good rule, especially for your appendicular skeleton. Okay, so here we go. All right, let's say it again with us. Ready? Do it with me. Muscles must have at least, that's right, two attachments, and cross at least one joint. Excellent. Okay, rule number two. Ready? The only thing that a muscle can do is pull or contract, either term is correct, and get shorter. All right, let's do that again. Ready? Okay, so the muscle can only what? Pull or contract and get shorter. That's it. So we've already covered two rules. That was easy, wasn't it? Okay, now let's do, I'm going to add a little extra to it for you, okay? Just so you can be super smart. So when you do this, pay attention. Which attachment is moving to the other attachment. Is the one down here, which is distal, or is it the one up here that's proximal, closer to? Okay, which one? Which one's moving to who? You're right. It's the distal one. The one is coming up. Okay, so we name them by function. Here we go. Ready? The attachment that's staying in its original spot. See it's staying in its original spot? That's the origin. So a lot of times when you look in a textbook, it'll say the origin of the muscle. Well, now you know that's the place where it's anchored. Okay? All right, good. So the origin of the muscle is the place it anchors. Very good. Okay, and it's usually up here, high, proximal. Ready? All right, next part. Now watch. Watch the play on words. The attachment that pulls the muscle in, pulls the bone in, is the insertion. How cool is that? And it's usually distal. All right, so here we go. Two rules. Muscles must have at least. You got it. Must cross. Good. And the only thing a muscle can do is pull and get shorter. And the attachment that pulls is the insertion. Good. The attachment stays in its original place is the origin. You got it. Okay, rule number three. Ready? I'm going to show you rule number three. You see it all the time. Okay, ready? First of all, let me use this. Yeah, 
I know, you think it's just a strand of spaghetti. Not today. Today, it is a muscle cell. And because it's long, we refer to them as muscle fibers. See that? Okay, now something interesting, if you're an athlete, you need to know this. These cells cannot replace themselves, okay? So, if you do not warm up, and you do not stretch, and you do not stay hydrated, and this muscle cramps up, and you pull it, Oh, that's right. You tore that muscle cell. Yeah, that's what a muscle pull is, is when you have torn that muscle cell. And if you tear it completely in half, the muscle will die. I know. And these cool white blood cells come and clean all that out, but this replaced with scar tissue. Well, unfortunately for you, scar tissue does not contract. Therefore, you're not near as fast as you were. So that's the demise of high-functioning college and professional athletes. So you must always make sure you warm up, stretch, warm up some more, stretch some more. And after your competition or your workout, you stretch some more and stay hydrated. Okay? That will protect those muscles. All right, here we go. All right, so let's go back to this guy. All right, another cool thing about him. Okay, he has more mitochondria per cell than any other cell in your body. So let's say this little strand has 200 mitochondria. Remember mitochondria, your powerhouse. They make energy for you. That's right, ATP. Now, let's just say, you know, that uh, David over here, he started watching some shows at night and he's watching uh, P90X or he's watching some other kind of workout. He's like, you know, I can do that. So he buys the series and and at night, before he goes to bed for 30 minutes, he starts doing this program. And six weeks later, this muscle cell right here no longer has 200 mitochondria per cell. Instead, he has 800 mitochondria per cell. Now, the cell can't reproduce, but the mitochondria, because it has its own DNA, always moms, has its own DNA, it can make more mitochondria. So, the muscle always makes more mitochondria to meet the increased workload. That's cool. We call it getting into shape. Now, of course, if we add more mitochondria, we got to add more groceries. And who brings groceries? Blood vessels. So a muscle gets more mitochondria and it gets more blood vessels. Yeah, so we say it gets more tone. That's right. And that's getting into shape. So the workout that just killed you at the beginning of when you started now, six weeks later, it's nothing because your muscles, your body adapted to that. All right, cool. All right, here we go. Back to rule number three. Okay, a little sidebar information for you. Rule number three, question. Could this one muscle cell lift my arm up? No. What's he need? He needs friends. That's right, he needs buddies. Okay, let's grab some. Here we go. See him? Yeah. Now, remember rule number two. The only thing they can do is pull and get shorter or contract. Okay, so question, why would I not, why wouldn't they line up like that? No, because they would not what? They can't work together. They're a team, that's right. So muscle fibers work as a team. Okay, in the textbook it's gonna be called a fascicle. I call it team fascicle. That's right, because they're a team. Excellent. Okay, you see it? Now, all teams need uniforms. So I'm going to take this guy right here. I'm going to wrap him up in some saran wrap. Here we go. All right. This saran wrap represents connective tissue. Here we go. See him? Boom. All right. Now, those of you that are learning anatomy or anatomy right now, or you're teaching it, this is dense, irregular connective tissue. You see all the wrinkles in it? That's because it's strong in every direction. Okay? See, our team had this uniform. Because this connective tissue goes around the muscle, it's called peri for perimeter and myo for muscle. So it's called the perimyceum. Cool? All right, now, right here at the end, I'm going to grab it and I'm going to pull. See how all the wrinkles line straight? Now we have dense regular connective tissue or what is called a tendon. See how they're lined up? Notice how the connective tissue actually goes all the way through. See it? Wraps it around it. This is one team. That's right. Now, if I have one team, eh, I might be able to lift my arm up a little bit, but I wouldn't be able to hold much weight. So what do I need? I need more teams. That's right. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another piece of connective tissue, and I'm going to wrap my teams up. You see them? 
Here we go. Look at that. I wrapped them up. Now this, this is another piece of dense regular, irregular connective tissue. Now notice, it sits on top. And when it sits on top, it's called epimyceum. All right. Anytime something sits on something, it's epi, like your epidermis. Cool, huh? So this is epimyosin. This is what you see when we take the skin off of the chicken. We see that beautiful piece of meat, which I'm about to show you. All right, so that's the epimyosin. Do you still see the fascicle and you see the lines of our muscle fibers? Very good. That's rule number three. Rule number three is this. The fiber direction or the fascicles, either one, always point to their attachments. You see, they always point to it. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So we call them striations. All right. So the striations always point to their attachments. Okay. So therefore, if I was doing this muscle right here, this attachment always points right there. You see it? So it's pointing to my origin and it's pointing to my insertion. If I act like they're strings, I can just look at that muscle and figure out exactly what that muscle does. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, okay, here we go. Rule number one. Must have at least two attachments. Cross at least one joint. Can only pull and get shorter, right? This is the origin. This is the insertion. And what do the striations always point to? Origin and insertion. Yeah, okay, so look right here in the textbook. See, same thing. Yeah, see that? See the lines? What's it pointing to? It's pointing to the origin. It's pointing to the insertion. How do we know that? Because if I, if I contract my back muscle, my backbone doesn't move, but my shoulder does. That's right, okay? And if we look at these guys, these walking anatomy charts, aren't they amazing, okay? Do you see the lines in the muscle? Do you see the striations? In athletes, we call it being cut or ripped. All you're seeing is that the fat under their skin is so low that it sinks in between the fascicles. All you gotta do is look. Origin, insertion. It points to it. Isn't that neat? Okay, now let me show you how that looks like on the chicken or the turkey you're gonna eat. All right? Or if you slow cook a roast and the fascicles just fall apart. Yeah, okay. So I got this guy right here, you see him? Mmm, this smells good. All right, I'm gonna get him and I'm gonna cut real quick. And I'm gonna pull a piece of him off. Okay, I'm gonna cut his, what is called the pectoralis major, the chest muscle. And the reason why we like to eat those on birds is because that's a big bulk of their body. That is a major muscle that helps them lift their body weight up and helps them fly, okay? Now, we know chickens don't fly very far, but here we go. Now, this is the skin right here, the epidermis, and because it comes off you, because this is a third degree burn, we cooked all the way through it. There you go. Now, take a look. Here's part of the pectoralis major. Now, let's pull it apart. We're gonna pull it apart. Now, look. What, what, what are you seeing? Look at that. Look at that, how pretty that is. Look, see the striations? See them? There's our striations. That's right. Isn't that awesome? Okay, and so you can see it in steak because muscle is muscle, whether it's in a cow or a chicken or a turkey. It follows exactly the same rules as we just learned today. All right, now here's another thing. When you're cutting that chicken, all right, or you're cutting the turkey, here's what's really neat. Birds, when we were talking about their pectoralis majors are huge. We call them big turkey breast, right? When you pull that off, okay, look at their sternum, okay? All right, now feel your sternum. Your sternum's flat, okay, because your pectoralis major's pretty, still pretty nice, but you're not trying to lift yourself off the ground, okay? But birds, their pectoralis major is like four or five times thicker than ours, so their sternum looks like a rooftop. It's keeled. Yeah, they have a keeled sternum. So look for that. That is really cool. Also notice, birds have to be lighter. Most of their sternum is hyaline cartilage, like what the end of your nose is. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Okay, so when you do that, you can see birds have a keeled sternum and you have a flat sternum. But their muscles follow exactly the same rules as yours. All right, hope you had a fun time with this lesson. Enjoy your meal.
See you later.